So, and I have a dilemma. And dilemma is that um, what I'm going to present is uh, is quite boring stuff for the professors because professors already know about that. So, and uh, my suggestion is that professors can use this hour to have a break, a cup of coffee, or to make a short nap. But I, th I hope that this will be interesting for the PhD students. And I hope it will bring something to your minds. Uh, but if professor decide to stay, you are more than welcome. Uh, so the topic uh, I suggested for this lecture was ZPG, have we got it right? Uh, it might look very provocative because as you know, there are millions and millions and millions of publications about ZPD and even asking this question might look stupid. But uh, uh, I have a good reason. And my good reason is that this is the article, the title of the article which I have stolen from others. And this article was published in 2003 by Stuart Ronalds. And the title was Vygotsky and ZPD, have we got it right? So it was published in 2003. Do you know this article? Nobody knows this article. Do you know how many quotations from this article? In 17 years, only five quotations. The article was published, but remains completely unknown. And um, if you have time, if you are interested, please just uh, make a note. And it's available online. And I, I just want to tell you something, dear colleagues, that please do not copy these slides now, because the slides all the presentations will be available online. What I want to invite you is just to think together with me, just to trying to make steps in getting more understanding or better understanding of ZPG. Are you okay? Because uh, I don't want you to work as Xerox machines, just copying, copying, copying. So uh, I consider you as human beings and very intelligent human beings. Are you okay? Would you agree with that? Okay, so then I was, um, uh, thinking maybe I have to change my title and one of the suggestions was this Z ZBR and ZPD is there any difference and this is again a title of the article but the reason is that it was my article so the title was not stolen by me and uh, the article was published in the journal cultural historical uh, psychology which was mentioned by the fantastic presentation of Katerina and if you're interested, you can find. So I don't want to repeat the ideas I put there in that article. My point for today is just to make a little bit of development of the of Nikolai. the of Thank the article. You, Nikolai. Ah? <laughs> Thank ah? you. Thank ah, you. yeah, it's okay. Thank you, Katerina, for mentioning. So, and I still I still have a question, and the question is this: Have we got it right? In other words. Um, if we didn't get it right, how to get it right? And the best way in the 21st century, if anyone is interested, how to get something right, what is EPD? The best way is to go where? Not to go to the library, not to read Vygotsky. Go to Wikipedia, go to internet. And internet has a lots of very simple explanations about ZPD. For example, this. Zone of proximal development, sometimes abbreviated as ZPD, is the difference between what a learner can do without help and what he or she can do with help. Okay, perfect, fantastic, so easy. And then after that, Nikolai is asking, have we got it right? How can, how can, how can we get it wrong from here? It's so simple, but, then we continue and we see this picture. This is also from internet. This is what I can do. This is what I can do with the help. This is what I can do without help. And zone of proximal development shows exactly this, what I can do with help. Come on, I say, this says the difference between 
this and this and this one even forgets about the difference just just points that's what I or we or the child or the learner can do with help this is what our friend by our best friend Wikipedia this is what our best friend internet gives us okay any ideas any objections everybody agrees how can we argue with internet how we can debate with internet many people just take it okay but if you look at the research as the scientific literature if you look at real academic peer-reviewed articles and books look what Palinskar says in one of her papers published almost 22 years ago ZPD is perhaps one of the most used and least understood constructs to appear in contemporary educational literature come on it was said 1998 22 years ago okay in 2003 Seth Chaplin published fantastic paper fantastic chapter about ZPD and what what he says is Vygotsky's concept of ZPD is more precise and more elaborated than its common reception or interpretation uh-huh uh-huh I say to myself maybe there is something more comparing to this in this these are examples of common perception and interpretation and second point our fantastic set Chaplin says to us is that proximal zone of proximal development is not concerned with the development of skill or any particular task but must be related to development this is a guideline which said Chaplin gives to us the the line was given 17 years ago and you can ask Nikolai are there any changes since it's a kind of question so the problem still remains I can still ask the question have we got it right or if we didn't get it right how to get it right and I can change this question into this is ZPD about development or ZPD is about training skills riding bicycle swimming what still a question right so and these three things I want to discuss with you today I will try to do it uh, in 45 minutes just to have 15 minutes for the discussion so that's why I will mm, not read everything which is on the screen you can read it will save time so I want to I want to know what Vygotsky what Vygotsky means by zonal proximal development why Vygotsky introduced this concept or this method or this 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 thing how this is related to development the second why is it more precise and elaborated than its common reception and interpretation and the last one and the last one and the most important question is how this more precise and elaborated understanding might improve our research and this is the question I cannot answer but I want to put this question and I want you to think about I'm speaking to students now I want to think about that if you have an intention to use ZPD as a tool of your research it might be very interesting for you to 
first to try to get it right and then think how you can apply this to your particular research. So I will speak today only about these things. Okay, so do you remember the first question? What Vygotsky means? Okay, so to know what Vygotsky means, we have to read Vygotsky. And then I want to introduce you to the book. This is the book in Russian, Umstvene Razvitie Detei v Procesie Obuchenia, published in 1935, one year after Vygotsky's death. And in this book, Vygotsky introduces the concept of zonal proximal development. So, uh, it might be translated as mental development of children in the process of learning, but uh, this is not a correct translation. First of all, because in Russian, umstvene razvitie is not mental development. Umstvene comes from the Russian word um, which is intellect. So, we can say, we can say intellectual development or development of intelligence which is related to thinking, which is related to understanding. But mental development ma might include a lot, of, a lot of stuff. So, and the second word, tricky word here is Procesia Abuchenia in the process of Abuchenia. But again, there is a problem. For many people, Abuchenia is learning. But Obuchenia in Vygotsky's tradition, which was developed further by Leontiev and Davidov, Obuchenia is not, cannot be translated as learning. Obuchenia is something which is different. So, and before we come to the point how um, intellectual development of the child is related to Obuchenia or how Obuchenia is related to intellectual development, we have to clarify things. What is obuchenia and what is development? Can you see the logic here in my presentation? Does it sound logical? Okay. So, intellectual development of children in the process of obuchenia. This is the translation of the chapter. So, but the problem is that ZPD was presented in these two, two chapters of this book, chapter one, chapter three. But the problem is that the chapter one still is not translated. What was translated was a combination, some parts of chapter one, some parts of chapter three, they were clipped together and published as chapter six in famous book, Mind in Society. But only recently, 2011, chapter three, where Vygotsky presents and explains what is ZPD was translated by Alex Kazulin. If you are interested, I can send you the link because I have a copy. So, but this is only first one. And also Vygotsky speaks about zone of proximal development in the, in the book Problem of Age, which is volume four, collected to works. And of course, he speaks about ZPD in chapter six of thinking and speech, which was translated several times, as you know. And um, uh, well, an example is volume one of thinking and speech. You see, we have only four original sources from Vygotsky. And they are somehow available in English. And what I'm going to speak is mostly based on this, on these sources, okay? Because do you remember the question, what Vygotsky means by ZPD? That's the question we are going to ask, or to answer, sorry. Okay, what is obuchenia? What is development and how obuchenia relates to intellectual development? That was the focus of Vygotsky's discussion, that was the content Vygotsky introduced zone of proximal development. This particular context, okay? We start with the very simple. What is obuchenia? 
obuchenie in Russian language has two meanings. First is a kind of everyday use of the term obuchenie, which might be translated as training, instruction, teaching, education, whatever. But this is a colloquial speech. This is an everyday using. Ребенок обучается, учитель обучает, so the child learns, the teacher teaches, <laughs> so, but <clears throat> in Vygotsky's tradition, the term обучение has a different meaning. And this is very important. What's the difference between colloquial, everyday use of the word обучение and обучение in Vygotsky? The difference is this. For Vygotsky, as well as, well as for Leontiev, and for Galperin and for Davidov, Abuchenia, first of all, is teaching and learning together. It's like a student, student, teacher system of interactions, collaboration. Not only teacher students, but might be group of students and the teachers. So student, student, teacher, collaboration, cooperation. This is what Abuchenia is. Abuchenia is not when teacher just sits and transmits the knowledge of the children or gives the task to the children and children bring the answer and teacher makes the mark and punishes excluding from schools for bad behavior. No, Abuchenia is a system of cooperation as Vygotsky calls, so trudnicesto, okay? So, which was developed further in Davidov's Fantastic Research as a, a concept of the learning activity in Russian Uchebnaya Deitelnest, the theory of learning activity. You see the difference? So it locates teacher and a student or student and student and a teacher as a unit. When they cooperate, when they collaborate, and only this type of collaboration might be called obuchenie. Not training, not instruction, not learning, but learning, teaching learning, yeah, maybe. Teaching, learning, collaboration, cooperation, learning activity of the teacher and the student, or the teacher and group of students, or within group of students. So, there is no one participant. So, collaborative activity is important. So, <clears throat> and then Vygotsky puts the question, when Abuchenia becomes good Abuchenia. What makes Abuchenia good Abuchenia? What makes Abuchenia useful Abuchenia? And this is the answer. Vygotsky says Abuchenia is only useful when it moves ahead of development. When it does, it impels or vacants a whole series of functions that are in a stage of maturation, lying in a zone of proximal development. You see only here, Vygotsky introduces the concept of the zone of proximal development. Zone of proximal development is a concept which helps us to explain what does it mean to make obuchini a good obuchini, a useful obuchini. And as if he is afraid, afraid of being misunderstood, he explains to us that this Abuchenia, which awakens the functions which are in the process of maturation, is different from other things which might be understood as Abuchenia. This is what distinguishes Abuchenia of the child from the training of the animals, Vygotsky says. Abuchenia of the child is not the same as training of the animals because Abuchenia of the child is focused on the functions which are in the maturation and which are in the zone of proximal development. This is also what distinguishes Abuchenia of the child which is directed to development from the instruction in specialized technical skills such as typing or riding bicycle, which do not have any significant influence on development. 
you see a clear differentiation, distinction between obuchenia and training of technical skills, instruction and teaching the animals. I give you two versions. The first is from Vygotsky's collected works, but I don't know by whatever reason the translation is not good enough because it was this red part was missed. As you can see, it's not here. I don't know, but I think this is important because training of technical skills do not have any significant influence on development. But Abuchenia should have a significant influence on development because it wakes wakes up those intellectual functions which are in a process of maturation. I can explain the same in different way. Good Abuchenia is Abuchenia which moves ahead of development. This means that Abuchenia impels or vacants a whole series of internal psychological functions of the child that are in a stage of maturation. They are maturing functions. These maturing functions are laying in the zone of proximal development. So, which means that for me as a teacher, if I want my obuchenia, if I want my cooperation with the children, if I want my pedagogy, if I want my practice, if I want my lesson to be productive, to be good, to be something which goes ahead development, I have to have a clear knowledge which functions of the child are at the stage of maturing. Not just matured functions, but functions which are in stage of maturation. And the only way to identify these functions of the child which are in the process of maturation is to, is to find, to identify the zone of proximal development because they are laying in the zone of proximal development. So, zone of proximal development, as Vygotsky introduces, is just a methods of diagnostics is a diagnostical method which helps me, the teacher, to think about what are functions which are in the process of maturation and after that I have to think about how can I arrange my obuchenia with the children to support development of these functions. This is the idea. This is the point. This is why Vygotsky introduced the zone of proximal development. Uh, I'm sorry, am I too complex in my explanation? No? Wow, I know. My, in Moscow summer schools there are all, only great students. So, it seems to me that now we have a little bit of idea about what is Abuchenia. And you see, um, I just ticked the box here. <laughs> just, we did it. So now, <clears throat> the second task is what is development because having very vague picture about development, we can hardly understand how Abuchenia relates to development. So, and uh, I apologize um, uh, in front of professors for repeating some things everybody knows, but I think for students it's okay. So, what is development? Again, we hear the answer from Vygotsky. The process of movement, which cannot be explained by something directed by external forces and factors. Wow. It looks very strange, right? Because traditionally we say okay, that factors, conditions, but Vygotsky says no. Vygotsky says the process of development and in intellectual development as well proceeds as a dialectical process of self-movement. If we want to understand what development is, we have to understand development as a dialectical process of self-movement. And uh, this is a quotation from recently 
published translation of Vygotsky's lectures on pedology. Uh, 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 we did a translation together with my colleague David Kellogg and myself. And again, I'm just sending my message to Katerina. Thank you, Katerina, for introducing this book to the audience in your in your in your address. So, and uh, I, I I can only recommend you to to just to. to to take this book because it's very interesting. So it's not our book, it's not my book and, and David's book, it's a translation of Vygotsky. Okay. Even more, I said you are great students, I think you will also accept this. Vygotsky says that better understanding of the whole process would be if we radically change our representation of child development and take into account that child development is a complex dialectical process, complex dialectical process that is characterized by complex periodicity, disproportion in the development of separate functions, metamorphosis or qualitative transformation of certain forms into others, complex merging of the processes of evolution and involution, complex crossing of external and internal factors, complex process of overcoming difficulties and adapting. Wow. If you look at the whole quotation, you see the most common word here is complex. Complex dialectical process, complex periodicity, complex merging, complex crossing, complex process. Because he highlights the complexity of the of development. The, de the process of development is not as simple, is not as superficial. It's a, it's a very complex dialectical process. And to understand this complexity, we need certain tools instruments, theoretical instruments, which might help us to analyze and to find and to discover this dialectical deepness of the process of development. And concepts of cultural historical theory, concepts of cultural historical theory, including the concept of ZPD, are these tools, instruments, theoretical instruments to analyze the process of development and to discover the dialectics of development. So, when I say development, I might say what I mean by development. I might mean very simple things. I love the American tradition. They say to me, Nikolai, we have developed a bank account. I say, no, you didn't develop, you just opened your bank account. It's nothing, it has nothing to do with development. It's just, a, you know, everyday user world, world, we have developed. So development includes qualitative reorganization metamorphosis, okay. So, and you probably you know this gentleman. So by dialectical, Vygotsky means dialectics of Georg Friedrich Wilhelm Hegel. So, <clears throat> there are three aspects of development, of the process of development, three aspects of the process of development, which might help us to understand zone of proximal development. Three aspects which might help us to understand what is zone of proximal development. First, as it, as it comes from this quotation, development is a complex process which characterized by several characteristics, periodicity, disproportion, metamorphosis, and so on. The second important point, which is important to understand ZPD is that the development, according to Vygotsky, is the process of how the social becomes individual, from the social to individual. And if you heard something about Vygotsky, you probably heard something about general genetic law, which says that every high psychological function appears on the stage twice. First, it appears on the social plan between the people, then it appears 
within the child in an internal plane. So from social to individual. And, uh, and this is the quotation. This is not Nikolai's fantasy. This is what Vygotsky says. Because he says that social reality is the source of development. Development goes from social to individual. And the third point in relation to development uh, is that at every age, from early childhood up to adults, every child has a very interesting situation. The child has some psychological functions which are already developed at the same time the child has some uh, psychological functions which are not developed yet they are in the beginning of their development or they are in the middle of their development we can say that they are developed functions or matured fun functions and developing functions for example uh, at the age five or six years before going to school or just a kinder many children have quite well developed memory but uh, not as high developed abstract thinking would you agree so it means that the, their memory is very well developed most most of them and their abstract thinking is not is not yet developed so and this is a very interesting point that at the same time children have functions which are developed and which are developing and what is the role of abuchenia the role of abuchenia is to be focused to support to facilitate those functions which are not developed already but which are at the beginning of their development as Vygotsky said obuchenia wakes up <laughs> those functions which are in the process of development to make this possible we teachers should identify these functions we have to know which functions in this particular child or in this particular children are already developed and which functions are in the process of developing, in the beginning of development. Because if I don't know this, I don't know how to make my abuchenia. I don't know how to, what kind of pedagogy, what kind of abuchenia I can, I can provide to them. To make my abuchenia good, I have to find this. And therefore, the only way to find those functions is, is to measure the zone of proximal development, is to define a zone of proximal development, because, as Vygotsky said, these functions are in a zone of proximal development. I love I loved this quotation. I really love it. It explains a lot. Vygotsky is comparing teacher with the gardener. With the gardener in the orchard, in the yard. If the gardener, gardener is only looking at fruits on the tree, that's good. But it's not a good gardener. Gardener is also looking at buds and flowers. And then the gardener can predict how many fruits he will get very soon. So the gardener looks at buds and flowers. The same, if teacher is only focused on those, what child can do, on only those functions which are already matured. But if the teacher does not take into account the functions which are the buds of development, which will be fruits tomorrow, the teacher is doing the same as that bad and and stupid gardener. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and then only after that, 
Only after this fantastic introduction, Vygotsky gives a definition of zonal proximal development. You see how interesting Vygotsky thinks. He doesn't start from definition and then explains. No, he creates the problem. He puts the question and then he shows the way and then he gives a, this is a copy past. My job is very easy, just to copy past, nothing else. So, and this is the translation, uh, what I did, I'm asking, I'm looking now at Russian speaking audience. I am looking at Serena. Serena, can you check the quality of the translation? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I think it was okay. And, but I will come to this later, but please read. It might look familiar to you. And my question is, <clears throat> If ZPD is the distance between the level of actual development as identified with the help of tasks the child, the child solves independently. My first question is, who identifies zone of proximal development of the child? Who does it? Who needs to identify well, what are buds, what are fruits on my tree? Whose task is this? Professors, please don't don't respond. I'm asking our students. Any ideas? People, wake up. Should I like Obuchenia to wake up you <laughs> a little bit? Because he says no worries. We no, are no, 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 professors. No, 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 professors. <laughs> students, please. <laughs> I know, professors, you know the answer. No, the, the teacher might identify. Of course, or teacher or a psychologist or a researcher. Mm. So, but not, of course, the children themselves, right? They, they can. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, no. they understand. Thank you, Amar. You are just saved the whole, the whole story. Okay. So, how? <laughs> how to identify? Perhaps it, it might be the most uh, challenging task for the yes. teachers uh, because he has to um, scaffold activity that can actually assess his actual level of development and then I think. Yeah, yes, that's a good, very good idea, but we are looking at defi this definition. The teacher has tools, instruments, with the help of which with the aids of which the teacher might identify the levels. Teacher identifies ZPD of the child with the help of tasks the child can solve individually or in cooperation. So tasks are the tools teacher use to identify potential level and actual level. Why? because he needs to know this potential level and actual level because zonal proximal development is the distance between them. But why teacher should know zonal proximal development? Because of teacher wants to make abuchenia a good abuchenia, which will be focused on those functions which are in the process of maturation, which lay in the zonal proximal development. You see, it's a very strong, very clear logic here. So, therefore, the task of the teacher is to identify at least two levels of child development. Look, this is not what I'm saying. This is what Vygotsky is saying. So, the first level is level of actual development, which points out functions which are already matured. It's about fruits. It's about fruits actual development. I give the task for the, for the child and I see the child can solve the task easily. What it says to me? It says to me that the child can solve these type of tasks individually. What it means to me that this task is on the, le on the child's actual level of development, which means that these functions of the child are fruits. 
the child can use fruits easily to solve the task. Okay, but I have to identify not only fruits. As a good gardener, I have to identify also the buds. For gardener, it's very easy. Just, just come to the tree and see where are the buds, where are the flowers. For teacher, it's not as easy. <laughs> yeah? So, the second task of the teacher is to identify the level of possible or potential development which indicates the buds of development, the functions which are in the buds or in the flowers, the functions which are only beginning to grow and develop. Task one, task two, very clear. And you see, I'm on, only quoting Vygotsky here. Nothing from Nikolai. Everything is from Vygotsky, okay? So, this is the overall logic. To find the ZPD, we have to find the distance between them. Because distance, ZPD is a distance between levels. Level of actual development, level of potential development. These two levels might be identified with the help of tasks given to the child. There are tasks the child can solve individually or only in cooperation with others. But these tasks are only tools, instruments to identify levels of development of the child. And these levels are determined by the functions. So level of potential development and ZPD is determined by the functions which are currently in the process of maturation, buds and flowers of development. So, it's much more difficult just for the gardener to look at the tree and count how many, how many buds and how many, <laughs> how many flowers. It needs a little bit of work, like, right, to provide a series of tasks to the child with the different level of difficulty to identify. But if we don't do this, how about then we know that our abuchenia is productive? Is our abuchenia gives more than it gives directly? Okay, one more, one more time. <laughs> so, <clears throat> zonal proximal development is the distance between two levels of development. This is definition the level of actual development, which is determined or depends on intellectual functions which are already mature, fruits, and the level of possible development or potential development, which is determined, which is, it depends on functions that are not matured yet, but in the process of maturation. So, levels depend on the degree of mat matured functions. How level of actual development can be identified with the help of tasks a child can solve independently? Just give them the task and look level of possible development can be identified with the help of the task a child can solve under guidance and in cooperation. Uh -huh. You see how complex the picture begins to be? But you are not afraid, I'm sure. It's okay. This is again what Vygotsky says, zonal proximal development equips the pedologist or the teacher or psychologist with the ability to understand the internal course, the development process itself, but not only the results. And identify not only what is already completed in the development and bring the fruit, but also what is in the process of maturation. The zonal proximal development allow, allows us to predict what will happen in development of the child tomorrow, 
tomorrow, not in the sense that tomorrow, just in 24 hours, no. I mean, in the nearest future. The same way as the gardener looking on the flowers, on the buds on the tree, can predict how many fruits potentially the tree will bring him tomorrow or in the nearest future. This is a very strong metaphor of the gardener. So we need to know ZPD to find the buds of flowers of development. And this is the purpose of ZPD as a methods of diagnostic was about. So ZPD is not about training skills because training skills does not provide intellectual development. We don't know. It's not about learning in a traditional <coughs> sense. ZPD uh, is a diagnosis. Is a dis yeah, is a di we are having oh. 15 minutes left. Yeah, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. uh, ZPD is the diagnostical method to identify intellectual functions which are not yet matured, which are buds and flowers of development. And it helps teacher to provide the pedagogy to support these matured functions. It helps us to make our abuchenie the thing which goes ahead of development. Uh, and I'm coming to the end and I want to show you the only available definition of ZPD in English. This is here from Mind in Society. This is what we all know. And here is my translation from the Vygotsky's original. And you can easily find huge differences. For example, Vygotsky says that levels can be identified with the help of tasks. But trans this translation says that developmental levels is determined by. So it means that they depend on independent problem solving. But that's not correct. So then Vygotsky says that the child solves under adult guidance and in co collaboration with more intelligent peers. And in collaboration. So the teacher should create a collaboration and guide this collaboration. Do you remember what Abuchenia is? Do you still remember? Abuchenia is a teacher-students interaction. But I don't know, it was translated as or collaboration, adult guidance or in collaboration. Fernanda, tell me, is it, is it better to say and rather than to say or? Not an alternative, right? Would you agree? Yeah, you see Fernanda is... Use a, a hyphen. Yes, okay. Then you make it a complex word. Yep. So, you see, uh, and this is my gift for you if you like. This is the correct translation of the original Vygotsky's definition of ZPD. Just for you to use this instead of this translation, which does not look great one, uh, if you like. But if you, if you prefer this one, it's okay. You can even prefer what the child can do in cooperation. No problem. <laughs> okay. And that's what I have sent to all of you. If you, I think you had time just to, look, to take a look at that. Vygotsky explains that if we learn just to write or, write or type the tapping machine or the keyboard, might nothing change in our mind, in, the conscious of, in, in, the, in, in our consciousness. It does not develop our thinking. It may, but it does not. But if we, if we teach students a new method of thinking, new type of solving problems, this might help the children to develop their intellectual intellect. So, 
обучение gives what it gives, plus it gives much more. It will make it possible to go far beyond the immediate results of the training. And you see again how it was translated. Uh, you can compare these translations. I don't know why, but I did not translate that. Okay. Now, Amar, I'm coming back to you. You mentioned scaffolding. Yeah? You did, not me. Amar? Yeah? Now you see the difference. Now you see the difference between scaffolding as something constructed around learning to support the learning and ZPD. ZPD is something which supports the flower to become the bud and then to come to the fruit. This is very mechanistic picture. This is very live, organic. Organic, not in the sense, but so. Here is nothing about the process of development. This is something about the process of development. Because you see here metamorphosis. Do you remember? Because he said, development is characterized by metamorphosis. And here is a metamorphosis. And the same in Charles' mind. So, and the last and the last point I wanted to say is that sometimes I can I can read from sources that Vygotsky says, "Oh, collaboration with more uh, intelligent peers under the guidance," but Vygotsky does not give any examples. Come on, come on! Just if he open volume four, we will see. This is the examples of types of the types of collaboration the teacher can use to guide the child to solve the problem in collaboration. We can demonstrate the child the methods of solving this task. And then the child just imitates. Or we begin to solve the task and ask the children to finish. Or we can propose that the child can do it in cooperation with other children. Or we just explain the principle of solving the task or asking leading questions or analyze the task for him. These are different forms of collaboration. But this is all about ZPD and Abuchenia and intellectual development. And I want to finish with example of my research. This is actually the research of my PhD student. And uh, it's a, it was a big research. I just take one small, small example uh, of that. Look at this um, picture. This is Eve or e Eva. She's got a problem in the, in, the, in the center. She tried to make a show and tell experience. Do you know what show and tell is? That the children can bring something from home, the toy, and then tell the story about this toy in front of other children. You see this young lady, <laughs> Eve, she could not. You see, she was confused. She could not tell us a story about the monkey. Teacher wanted, and teacher tried to, to, to support her asking questions, but she could not. So, where is the problem? You might say the problem is that there is a problem in development of her speech or she does not remember or maybe something bad is her thinking she cannot or maybe imagination she cannot create a story might be many 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 answers but what is what is what is the indication for us for Vygotskians is that the child is having a problem we need to find the buds of development we need to find the functions which are in a, in a state of the buds of development for you. Do you understand what I mean? To solve the problem, we have to find the exact functions which are the buds, and then we will focus our pedagogy to support Eve instead of training her how to tell stories to support her developing their capacities of telling the story. This is what as we, we as Vygotskians do. 
And my question is, where are the buds? Where can we find the buds of development? The fruits of development are okay. They are in the, in the, in the child. But where are the buds? Irina, any ideas? Sorry for asking you. <laughs> now, I'm just th sitting thinking about the, the question that is brewing, you know, maybe I just leave my thoughts for later. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because I'm, so, I'm, yeah. Uh, so, and if you have the good scans, if you have the good scans, the answer is very clear for us. The buds are, the buds are where are interactions because every higher psychological function appears first two times. First, on social level between the people as a bud of development and then later within the child as a fruit of development. So the buds are in Eve's interaction with others and therefore to support Eve to think about what kind of pedagogy we can provide to Eve. We have the, we, First, we had to find where are the buds? Are there anything she can do in cooperation with others she cannot do independently? Because what she can do in cooperation with others today, she will be able to do individually tomorrow. And therefore, we started to make a series of observations of Eve. And you see what, what we have found? Find? We have found that Eve is very, very high. She has very high level of development. She speaks two languages. She has a fantastic sense of humor. She is a dancer. Imagination was perfectly well. He remem she remembers all the stories because she lived in Jakarta. Then they moved to Australia. She tells a lot of jokes, movies, stories about her life in Jakarta, everything, speech, works perfectly well, memory perfectly well, imagination perfectly well, thinking perfectly well. Again, where is the problem? And the problem is that Eve can only do all these things when she is in a dialogue with others. If we are communicating with her, asking questions, resp responding her answers, she can tell a lot of you. But when the task is to tell the story about the market individually, she cannot. By doing this, we identify where are the buds of development of Eve. And because of that, we identify those functions which are not yet developed, but they are in the, in the stage of the of the bud or the, and the flower. And then we created a special, special individual tasks for Eve to support, to create a zone of proximal development and to support. And uh, unfortunately, I have no time about telling you what we did for Eve, but it was not my task. My task was to give you an example, how to identify the zone of proximal development and how important zone of proximal development is. And finally, my task was to convince you in one simple things. I want us, if possible, if possible, to forget about this and forget about that. This has nothing to do with the zone of proximal development. If, of course, we understand Vygotsky correctly. So, Thank you. Uh, I took all my time. There was no time for, for discussion and questions. I apologize for that. And, and, but I have to leave the stage to my colleagues. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.